Welcome to Scorched Earth and a general monthly read for the sign of Aquarius, Sun, Moon or Ascendant for the month of July. I hope you're well. I'm using the Llewellyn Tarot for you today. So, let's give these a shuffle. Oh, I'll get three cards for Capricorn, please. The first card is the King of Cups. I'd like to see that for you, Capricorn. That's awesome. Scorpio energy. That present energy, please. Ooh, thank you. We have the Nine of Swords. Okay, don't panic. Let's have a look at... Oh, get some clarifiers out and we'll see what that's all about. And what's coming towards Capricorn. Please. Thank you. We have Judgment in the Reverse. Got the Queen of Wands at the bottom of the deck. That's Aries energy, but it can be any fire sign or it can be an energy. Let's get some clarifiers and we'll see if we can't work out which is which. <clears throat> Tell me about the King of Cups, please. <clears throat> Thank you. We have the Eight of Wands. Ooh. And we have the Nine of Pentacles. So that one of sorts. Seven of Cups, understandable. Nine of Swords. Cool. We've got the Page of Wands in reverse and the Five of Pentacles in reverse. Shut that. Mm. And what about Judgment in reverse, please? King of Wands and the Tower. Wow, okay. Mm. At the bottom of the deck, we've got the Eight of Pentacles here. Followed by the Hanged Man and the Nine of Cups. And that's a really interesting combination of cards for you, Capricorn, because, you know, what we've got here are effectively consecutive cards, even though they are, you know, different suits. We've got the Eight and the Nine here. Eight of Pentacles, Nine of Cups, but with this very important Hanged Man in between. That's Piscean energy, but it talks about sometimes sacrifice. But more often for me, it talks about changing perspective, right? Achieving wisdom through a change of perspective here. So what we've got is a card of working very hard, you know, nose to the grindstone. Whether that's literally in your job or just, you know, the way that you are approaching your life. And then we have the Hanged Man leading to a Nine of Cups situation. Now, the Nine of Cups is all about... <clears throat> it's about emotional fulfilment, but it's of the individual. I always see the Nines as speaking specifically to the individual. But it's also about personal responsibility for your emotional state, you know? It's almost not, not not hiding any part of your emotional state. And we see in the Eight of Pentacles, and it's somebody working very, very hard there, and he's quite happy to allow the Pentacles to be on display. But with Capricorn, often you're not you're not comfortable in allowing all of your emotions to be on display. And it feels like there's a change of perspective that's going on here that makes it more comfortable for you to do that. I don't think that that you're going to go around necessarily wearing your heart on your sleeve, Capricorn, but there certainly seems to be another shift going on with you. Well, we've got a lot of cards here that are talking about a shift. <clears throat> because it seems like it seems like a bit like perplexing energy for you. I mean, we see that in the current environment. We've got the Page of Swords and the Seven of Pentacles underneath the Queen of Wands here. So, you know, whether or not you have a fire sign in your life, and it doesn't need to be female at all. It, speaking energetically, it is is that dynamic, bold, assertive kind of confidence. In for some of you, actually admitting that you don't know what is wrong right the, the the page of swords is all about that kind of mental expansion like taking in of new information and being all like who and we've got the seven of pentacles like is it worth continuing on the route that you are on here you know it's about investing or divesting the energy and effort that you are putting into a situation and it feels to me here like although you may be fairly confidently asserting something Maybe, oh yeah, this is what's sitting behind it. 
but maybe you're confidently asserting that you don't really know how to change this thing, you know? It takes a lot for you to admit that you don't know something. It's not a comfortable position for you. You, know, you like to be able to be in a position of expertise. We see that here with the Eight of Pentacles. But sometimes allowing that vulnerability to show through and go, actually, I don't have all of the answers, opens you up to the possibility that new information may come in that may help you, you know, and quite possibly by another person. You know? So we've got this King of, uh, King of Cups, rather, here in your recent past. It's a card of emotional mastery. It is a card of, well, even the King of Cups doesn't wear his heart on his sleeve, but he is ruled by his heart, right? So we can see it as talking about a level of emotional maturation coming through, which is not to say that you are immature. It's to say that, you know, your emotions are evolving and growing with you, as exactly as they should be. But it feels to me like you've had some insight into, into why you are as you are, Capricorn. Now, there have been points over the last year where you've kind of dipped in and out of this. And I think every time you come out again, you've got a little bit more insight. But we've got this Eight of Wands here <clears throat> with the Nine of Pentacles. And the Eight of Wands is, it can sometimes be communication right, as in a two-way conversation, but we notice that all of the, these uh, ones are traveling in the same direction. It's like information coming to you, communication happening at you. Now, this might be by way of a person. It could have been a Scorpio, to be honest, or it could be that it's your insights about a situation, and I feel more that it's your insights than anything else. And we've got your insights leading you to this point here, and like why you are like this. Now, the Nine of Pentacles, follows on nicely from the eight there and it's it's about oh, material security so you know somebody who puts in the effort and does the work accrues the pentacles at a predictable rate you know x plus y equals z i put in the hard work i do something until i'm very very good at it and the rewards will be commensurate and then i will end up at this nine of pentacles place where my material needs are taken care of and everything is good you know she's she's got that vineyard behind her there <clears throat> looking very much like she's living a comfortable life but she is solitary now capricorn you are in some ways solitary by nature or at least that you need a lot of time on your own you know you blow your mind out quite a lot on the things that you are very focused on like it's all encompassing for you spend a lot of time thinking about it and sometimes to decompress to let your mind wind down you have to be on your own but the way that these cards are structured it feels very much like the insight that you're getting is to is why why all of that is happening you know why you are so singularly focused on one thing and it tends to be towards the material in terms of you know making a stable very realistic little empire for yourself And it feels like, to me, it's made you quite uncomfortable, Capricorn. Now, this is good, because all the tools you need to grow are in the places that you don't want to look. And there's a reason why this energy keeps coming back at you, Capricorn, over and over again. It's like, and pushing you just a little bit more each time. Because in your current energy, we have this Nine of, nine of Swords now. The Nine of Swords can mean all sorts of things. It, it can mean everything from being a bit worried about something right up to full-blown you know, mental illness. It is about that, you know, waking up at 3 a.m. in the morning, like what's the thing that's going to be on your mind? It, it's talking about those sorts of energies there. It can be anxiety, and that can be very low level, or that can be, you know, extremely present in your day-to-day -day experience. But for me, we've got another nine, remember? So it's all about you. This card specifically speaks to me about perspective. 
Now, I've mentioned this before, like I have this kind of arbitrary rule, and for most decks it's true, not all, but most, where swords up are good and swords down are bad. Well, all the swords are stacked on the wall there. Right? They are effectively in a neutral position. And so the thing... that dictates whether these thoughts are a threat or whether they're just nice wall adornments is your perspective on the situation. And given that the character in the card has her head in her hands and she's, you know, sat up in bed and it's obviously you know, night time and all that sort of thing, it's worrying about something from not necessarily the wrong perspective, but not the right one, you know? And we see it further in this Seven of Cups here. Right? A card that speaks of illusion, a card that speaks of <clears throat> emotional confusion. Now this is a path that you have to walk before you can get to that Nine of Cups. Remember that it was right here with that change of perspective too, you know. From the seven, you will go to the eight. You will understand what it is that needs to be left behind. And eventually you will arrive at the nine. But what you are undergoing now is a process. And the very first thing is to start trying and nailing down what is in each of these cups. You know, what internally drives you, Capricorn. Why it is that certain things are too uncomfortable for you to look at. Why it is that you take that energy and you put it elsewhere. You know, wherever there's an excess of something, it's indicative of a lack somewhere else Capricorn and, and I don't think that you're excessive in terms of the kind of security and stability that you need around yourself <clears throat> but you put more effort into that possibly than anything else and the, the question is arising why now I feel like the reason that you are in this state at the moment is because you can feel that there is something that is trying to shift and change within you but that in and of itself is uncomfortable because, you know, as an earth sign, change is not something that you particularly embrace unless it's forming part of, you know, unless it's self-directed, you know. And, and the thing is, this is self-directed, but it's not self-directed from your conscious mind. It's from your subconscious mind. And this is where the confusion is arising because you and your subconscious mind aren't quite as close friends not quite as in alignment as you thought that they were no no oh, uh, no that's not actually quite true because i think for most capricorns they know there's a dark nugget of something inside of them and it's it's finding a way to to penetrate that crack it open and have a look at what's inside i had a capricorn pull me up in the comments on the last video that I did, instructing me to stop, full stop, stop saying that Capricorns have a five year plan, because uh, we don't all, and stop saying that all Capricorns are ignoring their feelings, because they don't, and some of us are very, very sensitive. And, and I actually wrote a very long reply to that, clarifying exactly what I meant by those things. Um, it didn't get a reply, but, <coughs> When I say Capricorns have a five-year plan, it's a verbal shortcut to the way that you do things, the planning, the strategizing, and then the execution of that thing exactly as you had planned to do it, right? <coughs> I don't necessarily mean that you all have whiteboards and, you know, red string off and, you know, and, and enumerating the different ways that you are going to take over the planet. You know, global domination, it's not about that. It's about the particular mindset that is involved with, you know, how you commit yourself to things and what it is that you commit yourself to. And when I say that Capricorns ignore their feelings, I don't mean they ignore every single feeling that they have. They are not robots. You are the sea goat, right? So the goat aspect of you is, is that material security, right? It is that engagement with the reality of, of the 3D world. The C part of that equation is difficult. 
in one way and one way alone, right? Now, and there are a myriad ways in which Capricorns consult their feelings, how they feel about a particular thing, day in, day out, and that's all that's so cool. When I say you're ignoring your feelings, I am talking about the really deep, dark stuff, Capricorn, that you know is there and you very studiously ignore, right? Now, you have to know it's there to ignore it quite as beautifully as you have done. But we are talking about the traumas of the past here. And it might be that there are ways in which you intellectually, occasionally skirt near those things. And you can, you know, you can say, oh, well, things were quite difficult when I was a child. That's fine. But there's no emotional engagement with that. Well, and that to a degree is good because we don't want you reliving traumas of the past over and over again. But the emotions that are associated with that have not been processed and released, Capricorn. They have been locked in a box and put to one side because they don't help you get to where you are. Or at least in your perception, they have not helped you get to where you are. You know, They are messy and they are a distraction and they're not particularly logical. Now, there are, like I said, there are plenty of Capricorns out there who have very meaningful relationships that are very open and loving and all that sort of thing. I have never once suggested that Capricorns don't have emotions, because you do. But these really painful ones are what I'm talking about when I say you don't really want to look at them. Because because you are so sensitive because it represents real pain. And opening that up again feels counterintuitive. It feels like it is inherently unstable like as, a, as a process. And so why would you do that? Well, you do that because, because you expend a lot of effort in studiously ignoring that bit of yourself, Capricorn. And you may notice that it leaks out occasionally in ways that you didn't expect. And because you're smart and because you're, you know, actually quite aware of the way that you work internally. It's like it's on the list of things to do at some point, but there's always something else that you could do instead, right? So the normal day-to-day -day emotions are fine, work and stuff is fine, but when something swerves just a little bit too close to that, it's like, no, I can't do that because it's going to affect X, Y, and Z in my here and now, and I'll put it off. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to this, revisit in about six months, and I'm sure I'll be in a much better place there, and I can just do this, and this will all be fine. But it feels like it's leaking out, Capricorn, because... The insight that I feel that you are getting about yourself, certainly what is indicated there, is that this hasn't been quite as well compartmentalized as you thought it had. Those ways in which it leaks out periodically may have been increasing. In occurrence, for sure. But possibly in intensity too. Something in your subconscious is really trying to, to break out Capricorn and it, it's trying to show you how, despite the fact that you have studiously ignored this particular thing, that everything else in your conscious mind has been adjusted to take account of the fact that it is there so that you can ignore it. I, I hope that this is explaining this properly because I think that actually that comment was really, really pertinent for what is going on right now you know and we have the page of wands and the five of pentacles in reverse here and i think because they came out together it's really important that they are read together and they make a lot of sense coming out together actually let's just go here first right this is the five of pentacles this is all about poverty and lack of any description right so it's not necessarily about money but it could be you could have grown up extremely poor and this could have been one of the really 
you know, really, really strong motivators for you in succeeding in life, you know, right, you know, parents are really, really shit at maybe at handling money, you know, dealing with it or even just earning it. I will not be like that, right? My childhood was deprived in some sort of way. I will make sure that my adulthood is not. That's cool. But it could have its manifestation in all sorts of other ways too. The, the point is, it's about poverty and lack of anything, right? <clears throat> now, this way around, this is about not being in poverty, not being in lack. But notice that it's still this card. There are plenty of cards in the tarot that talk about abundance. This isn't abundance. This is a lack of a lack of abundance. Do you see the difference? Do you see how they're, they're, they're very subtly different things? Still, at the core, it's this fear here of not having something, which isn't, it feels to me, particularly applicable in your here and now. I mean, Capricorn, have you sat back to actually see, a, you know, truly perceive the empire that you've built for yourself, where you have come from, as to where you are now, right? The likelihood of, of this, I think is probably like vanishingly small for you. And yet the motivation is still to prevent this, right? It's a subtle lack of, a subtle shift in perception that is required here to, to perceive the abundance rather than the lack of lack. Now this page of wands, it's excitement, it's, it's a precursor to movement. It is doing things differently, right? Starting to live differently, actually. Certainly putting things in place, at least when it's this way around. When it's like this, it feels like it's coming from a place of fear. Again, it's not changing things for fear that the house of cards that you have built will come tumbling down and that this will then apply again. But Capricorn, that's not true. It feels to me like your appreciation for the life that you have built yourself is missing. Right? It might be that you allow yourself a small moment of contentment every now and again where you go, oh, okay, I need to buy a thing, that's cool, I've got the money to do that, you know. Um, maybe sitting in your garden, going, oh, it's a nice garden, I actually really like this, this is good, you know. It's all about your ability to provide, not only for yourself, but for those around you, right? Your family unit, Capricorn, the people that are important to you, because that providing is the thing. Now, whether it is that you're concerned that this could all end tomorrow, I mean, there's, there's a feeling of ca catastrophe about this. This is always just staving off catastrophe. But the catastrophe isn't there. It's a figment of your imagination, you know? It is catastrophizing rather than looking at the reality of the situation. And looking at the reality of the situation is something that you've always done very well. And that's why you've achieved so much. That's why you are in such a secure position now. But what hasn't caught up, Capricorn, are your emotions associated with this. Like I said, you don't have an abundance mindset. You have a, a lack of lack. <sighs> but not a lack of fear. And it feels like there is such concern here that if you chose to do things differently, like I said, this Five of Pentacles will suddenly rock back into existence in your life. Like it, it sits just outside the periphery of your vision at all times, Capricorn, and it's there and it's kind of grumbling away at you. This is the precursor to you discovering what it is about your mindset that needs to be released, right? The next card from the Seven of Cups is the Eight of Cups. This is, this is confusion, right? This is possibly illusion. It is perhaps the stories that you've told yourself about your own success, yeah? 
that perhaps just keeps that self-sabotage at the door doesn't let it put its foot over but it's there and you're so acutely aware of it from here right, being able to identify the emotions that are associated with this feeling for you from your past is what will allow you to not not just turn this upside down but have this card not appear in your reading at all this card to be in fact replaced with something like the empress or you know ten of pentacles something like that your subconscious is screaming at you that something needs to change and the thing one of the things that needs to change is actually allowing yourself to deserve what you have allowing yourself to relax into what you have Capricorn allowing yourself to appreciate it and be grateful for it and I'm not saying be complacent because I think complacency is something that the Capricorns not having any of that, like it's always pointing in a direction and working towards this five-year plan, right? Not your literal five-year plan, but the plan, right? How do I proceed? How do I grow? How do I build upon what I've got here? Like how often do you stop and appreciate what it is that you've got in front of you, what it is that you're building upon? You've done an incredible job, but the fear of it turning into a house of cards and, and being pulled away from you is really important. Now, let us also consider stability and security and what that means. Because for a lot of you, you have externalized that, right? Now, the expression of it in the external is indicating to me, at least in this reading, times in your past where you felt insecure, where you felt like you couldn't provide. And I often will go back to childhood, right? There was an insecurity about your position in childhood, whether or not you were poverty stricken, you know? And there's a work ethic here that's been drilled into you whether by your literally by your parents or whether by circumstance the observations that you made as a child you know you have to work you have to work you have to work you never let up always working always working always really applying yourself to diligently to everything that you do but always to escape this or this, rather. Let's put it the right way up. Where you are is really uncomfortable at the moment, Capricorn, and, and I'm sorry it feels like that for you, but... Lean into the discomfort. You know, there's there's retro, retroactive, retrospective rather, foundation building going on here. And it's kind of requiring you to pull out the foundations that were there before and put new ones in. Because if you rewrite the script on the past, right, which is to say rewrite your understanding of the past, it necessarily changes who you are in the present too. You know, because these things aren't static. The past actually isn't static. Changing your perspective can completely change the story of your life. Right? It can certainly help to bring in more, more of a sense of gratitude for what you have right now, rather than this kind of scarcity mindset of it might all disappear, so I need to work really, really hard and, and keep all of it in there, you know? <clears throat> the 
card that you've got going towards you in July is, is judgment. And it was in the reverse. Now, judgment can be about things coming up from the past that you need to deal with. Mm -hmm. it can be looking back on the past. It can be the resurrection of old situations and old circumstances that you thought were dead and buried. And these would be within you, Capricorn. But it can also talk about making a judgment on things and the judgment that you make on your past necessarily changes how you see yourself in the present, you know, or keeps it static even. The interesting thing for me though in July is that this came up in reverse. So it can be a block, it can be a delay, it can be a refusal to deal with that. Or it could be resolutely facing forwards, not looking back at the past, you know. We have the King of Wands and we have the Tower here. And it could be for some of you that there is a, a Leo or even a fire sign. I mean, there's a lot of fire here. There's a fire sign that holds the key to the Tower energy coming in for you. Somebody who starts that tower falling just with a comment or an observation or something that they say to you, you know, something that has your mind putting together something that it never saw before. And then suddenly the house of cards falls, but it's not the house of cards that you were worrying might fall. Because that one actually isn't a house of cards. That which you have built, that which you have constructed for yourself. The serious way that you have engaged with the material world and made sure that you were comfortable within it. Absolutely rock solid, Capricorn. The house of cards is emotional. It is the narrative that you have worked to, the script that you have worked to, without allowing yourself to question why it is. Because to do that, would fundamentally destabilize everything. Because at the heart, you know that it isn't necessarily the right one, or you know at least that the confrontation that you would have to engage with to look within yourself and examine that very, very deep pain that you as sensitive creatures have experienced at some point in the past. might destabilize, destabilize everything to the point where you can't put it back together again, right? Now that, I feel intuitively looking in on this situation, I know that to be untrue, right? That, that, that's, that's not something that's gonna happen. But you are dealing with your subconscious and your subconscious doesn't talk in words, it doesn't have language, it doesn't even have culture really, to be honest. It's not mathematically literate, it doesn't understand the passage of time. And it's spent a long time constructing this shield around the pain so that you can go out and you can eliminate the threat of the past in your present, right? And the threat of the past, this, in whatever way it applies. <coughs> This could be emotional too. Now I have to say that, you know, where you were not emotionally nurtured as a child, you realized, I said this before, you realized that you got the attention that you needed. When you, you excelled at things, whether from your parents or your teachers or your, you know, you know whatever it is. <clears throat> and so all of that helped to compartmentalize Capricorn who Capricorn was. It showed you what was a desirable trait in you and what was not a desirable trait in you. And what was not a desirable trait in you was always the emotional, right? And that's why it's got compartmentalized. Now you may have done some work to uncover that and that's cool. And you may feel mostly 95% of the time that you're, you're on, on top of all of those things, but you have triggers Capricorn. And they come out occasionally and the, the rage and pain that comes out with it is something that, that you don't enjoy. It's something that is inherently unstable about you. And, and that is reason enough 
why you're not going to pay any attention to it. some more Leo energy there actually <laughs> excuse me <clears throat> as well as the king of uh, wands we also have the strength card here but what we've got is the nine of cups the five of pentacles and strength and it feels to me this this month actually you need to take some action mm -hmm. <sighs> But it doesn't feel like it's happening for you this month. It doesn't feel like you're quite at that point. And I say this because not only is the judgment card upside down, but what we haven't got is this. We haven't got you actively turning and looking at the tower. And what we've got, actually, is your back to it. I'm like, no, not prepared to look at that tower, not prepared to take any action towards that tower, not prepared to take any action to change the way that I'm looking at it. But with the Tower and the Judgment card, it kind of feels like it might get taken out of your hands, Capricorn. We have the Nine of Cups, and we have the Five of Pentacles, and we have the Strength card there. Now, the Nine of Cups has already come up for you. It is about your emotional well-being. It is about embracing that, right? Now, it seems to me that, that what we've got going on here is, is somewhat of an intervention, to be honest. Because here is that Five of Pentacles in the upright, right? Here is that situation which you fear, right? That which sits on the periphery of your consciousness all of the time. Appearing in the upright now. And although you don't want to look at it, I feel like it's kind of being brought to your door because we've got, we've got the Nine of Cups. We've kind of got you being pushed to look at this and the energy of judgment and the energy of the tower are very strong energies are going huh, right you thought you were gonna get away from this one right we're just gonna dump this on you here you know very much like strength in that regard like whether you like it not strength sorry death in that regard whether you like it or not here is this situation that's been dumped on you and like you choose how you deal with that moving forwards but it feels like you're getting pushed out of your comfort zone this month, Capricorn, because there's the strength card, right? It's all about pushing you through this. It's about getting you to look at this and see it for what it is and then releasing all of the emotions around it. Now, I'm not seeing the Eight of Cups here, which means that you are not doing this. It doesn't feel to me like you are doing this. It feels like the universe is kind of throwing this at you. And you can choose to ignore it or you can choose to sit with the discomfort for just a little while and see where it takes you because because all of the terrors that exist within you Capricorn I feel like they've been magnified over the course of, of years by your refusal to engage with them and your subconscious has had enough it's screaming it's like I need to vent I need to release now there's a piece on the other side of this process for you Capricorn you know, the best advice I can give you at this point is to roll with it, go with it, see what happens, because you are being called upon to grow. And it's interesting, I'm looking at the card, <clears throat> I'm looking at cards at the bottom of this deck, this is the Tarot of the Abyss by Anna Turian, absolutely exquisite deck. <laughs> Notice this, we have the Nine of Pentacles again, there, right? That's, that's you, that's always you, right? Good place to be, but we're tracking back. The shadow cards, the bottom of the deck, are tracking backwards. So we have the Nine of Pentacles, but we're going back to the Eight now. We're taking a step back from what you have built for yourself and where you are now, right? Okay? because there's work to be done. There's a mastery that needs to be achieved here that is gonna take some more work before you get to that point. And the card behind it is judgment in the upright. But in this deck, it's called awakening. Capricorn, it's about awakening yourself to who you really are because <laughs> there's the devil. There's the card of Capricorn behind it. Look how you are strung up. 
This is all about releasing that which you are tied to and had no idea. With some idea, like I said, a bit of an idea because you couldn't ignore it quite so studiously if you didn't know it was there. This is about going backwards and untying all of those binds right, from the past, changing your perspective on the past so that in the present you become someone different right, with almost no effort. You don't need to change anything in your material environment at all. You don't need to do that. The changes that need to be wrought are in here. And the more open that you can be to this process, the more comfortable it will be for you to navigate it mm, to a point. I mean, it feels like it's a really uncomfortable set of energies for you, but it is very much a period of shadow work for you. It's like t taking these insights and, and being open to them. Right? I think that the pain possibly might not be as bad as you think it is because you're now dealing with it as an adult. You are not dealing with it as the child that your subconscious is kind of tapped out at, right? It's just like, pff, eight years old, I've had enough of this shit. I'm going to start putting in, you know, coping mechanisms to deal with these things. And every time you revisit that, you go from 30, 40, 50, 60 years old back to eight. And you're like, well, shit, that's horrifying. Not going to deal with that because I'm an adult and I can turn my back on it now, you know? But every time you do that, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And those limitations that your internal five, six, seven, eight-year-old, nine-year-old, ten-year-old, whatever, are trying to put on you to keep you safe, are stopping you from truly appreciating the abundance that is in the here and now for you, Capricorn. Right. I'm going to leave it here. If this has resonated with you at all, there is an extended. I'm going to go over to Vimeo and I'm going to do that now. I'm going to pull this apart a little bit and see if we can find a way to make this process a little less excoriating for you. Um, Feel free to join me over there if you would like. If not, no shade, that's fine. Um, I will see you next week. I I don't know. No, scratch that. I'm not sure. I'll be back soon. Anyway, know that I love you all very, very much. And I will see you soon.